So here I am in Kodaika now, and it's freezing. <laughs> Not quite freezing. 16 degrees at noon. So I'm in this budget hotel that looks like a converted factory. <laughs> Big, thick concrete walls, marble floors. A pretty spectacular views, but really silent. And everything about the I Ching readings worked out. The wind blows low upon the mountain. Those are the exact words, and that's what we got. It's very breezy, raining on and off, and quite cool. <laughs> so, since I was here the last time, everything has changed. The town is huge now, and it covers a lot of spots that used to be virgin forest. And there's not much tourism. Most of the tourist infrastructure is shut down because of COVID. And uh, I was lucky to find one place where the management doesn't believe in it, so <laughs> they're still open. But there's only local residents here. I didn't see any foreign tourists anywhere. And, oh, how could I say, all the goods and services that are normally available to the tourist market are unavailable now because there's no market. So I wasn't successful in one of my uh, purposes to come here, but Meanwhile, some other interesting stuff has come up. I've been spending a lot of time, since I have a lot of time, with my good old friend Terence McKenna. And his old recordings are quite interesting. Uh, I should clarify on the history. I met Terence once in Hawaii a long time ago. And then we got involved in a correspondence for years about Vedic Soma. Now, a lot of people claim to be followers of the Vedas, but what they don't recognize or realize is that the cult of the Vedas was founded upon a psychedelic drug called Soma. And since the actual composition or formula for Soma is not given in the Vedas, only how to use it and what its effects are, <laughs> we don't know. So a lot of people speculate on this, of course. But I th we came to the conclusion, not a very satisfying one, but nevertheless, the conclusion that, similar to ayahuasca, soma was probably a combination of more than one plant or fungus that together had a synergistic effect. And maybe the plants are extinct due to human influence or greed, or maybe people have just forgot what they are. Or maybe, I think this is the likeliest interpretation, maybe it was made such a secret, 
such a deep secret that nobody could know and restricted only to priesthood or something. And when the priesthood died out, so did the secret. I think that's quite likely. And we may be walking in the forest right next to the plants that made Soma, but we don't know how to recognize them. Anyway, people who claim to be followers of the Vedas, but don't recognize the utility of natural helpers, psychedelic drugs, are basically hypocrites. And this opens up onto a much larger issue, a much more important issue. And that is that nature is a whole. W-H-O-L-A. God is a whole. Shiva and Shakti. God and nature. The seer and the seen. Each one is a whole. But each one is a different expression of Brahman. So we should not try to establish or join or support or justify cults, sectarian organizations that propagate a certain teaching, a certain religion, and that militate against any other teaching or any other expression of the same thing. Can you say that this plant growing in the jungle is sacred and godly and righteous and holy and pure? And then you point at the plant next to it and say, no, and this one is terrible and bad and ugly. <laughs> that would be silly, wouldn't it? And similarly, it's silly to say that this spiritual teaching or this spiritual method or path is good and right and it's the absolute and it's everything we need. But this other one over here is bad and nasty. Listen, if it was useless, it will die out of its own accord. This is a teaching that comes from the Bible, believe it or not that the Roman proconsul, when told about the story of Jesus and asked what we should do about this, he said nothing. If it has value, if it's good, if it contributes to people's lives, it'll thrive. And there's nothing we can do about it. And if it's useless and bad and does not contribute to anything, It'll die out of its own. There's no use to worry about it. No need to do anything about it. And that leads me to one of the things that uh, Terence McKenna said in one of his talks. He said, here I am sitting, to, sitting and talking to you guys about wholeness and the earth and the goddess and transcendental knowledge and all of this. But to do this, I had to get on the internet and contact a bunch of people. And then they had to get onto the internet or on the phone and contact a bunch of other people. And I had to get on a 747 and fly over here, which is just about the most opposite thing to what I'm saying that it is possible to conceive. So in other words, he, he, he actually started putting himself down. He started to say, actually, I don't have a very good taste, you know. I don't really have 
uh, coherence in my ideas and my actions. Because I can do this, I can get on a plane and go someplace and then talk about the Gaian mysteries, you know. <laughs> so he was saying, in other words, a practicing mystic would not be going out and lecturing people at universities. A real practicing mystic would be in the jungle all alone with his sacred plants and working on himself like mad. And I can really respect that point of view. I can, I can really get into it. I mean, here I am at like 7,200 feet, <laughs> over 2,000 meters altitude. And I'm in this fortress-like thing on the top of a hill. And I spent 3,000 rupees worth of petrol, or, or diesel actually, to get here. And uh, I had to hire a driver and so on. Why? To go searching for the plants of the goddess. Well, actually, I could grow the plants of the goddess in my garden if I really wanted to. And I do. So I've ordered a bunch of seeds. <laughs> because I can't seem to get them directly. I'll just have to grow them. So... After expending all this energy and spending money and everything to get here, I find that conditions have changed and I can't do the things that I intended to do. So wouldn't it have been better for me to just stay in my little place and do my practice? But, you know, on the other hand, I needed a break. I had been in Tiruvannamalai for over a year continuously without going anywhere, which is very unlike me. <laughs> Actually, I love to travel, but uh, I love to explore beautiful natural places. But here I've come just at the worst time of the year. The weather is very difficult and I don't have the proper equipment for it. If I did, oh, I could just tramp out there in the woods and hang out as much as I wanted to. But uh, I didn't think, I didn't plan too well in advance. It was kind of impulsive. Well, the I Ching told me, the I Ching made me do it. <laughs> but it's worked out. Because it's led me to this realization, it's led me to this point of view, that if we want to approach nature, if we want to approach God, if we want wholeness, if we want wisdom, we don't have to leave our backyard. We don't have to go anywhere. We don't have to see anybody. We don't have to take any magic herbs or anything. We can uh, look into what's in front of us in nature and find whole worlds within worlds looking deep into nature. And we can look deep into ourselves also. That I realized it the night that I got here, you know, and I was so exhausted from the trip, it was an eight and a half hour drive, that I just like fell into the bed. And I noticed that I was immediately in transcendental consciousness. I didn't have to, you know, do any special exercises or breathing or meditations or anything. Just boom, I was there. And light and energy and 
all kinds of visions were spilling out across my inner vision. And I had to realize that this is always there. Maybe it's more difficult to achieve if a person has suffered from compulsive extroversion all their lives. You know, maybe if they really bought into the conditioning in school, or if they really bought into what we're told on TV, they had a hard time letting go and seeing into themselves. But everything is there. There's nothing missing anywhere. If you look into anything deep enough, huh? You can find the whole universe, even in a grain of sand. So I had to go on a journey. I had to travel. I had to go through austerities. That's always the way it is. To get the vision, you have to be willing to go on the trip. But I got the vision. I had to come all the way here to get it, but it was with me all the time. It's just that it had become such a routine part of my daily existence that I didn't really see it separate, you know, from foreground and background. I didn't really see my transcendental consciousness as different from my ordinary circumstances. So maybe I didn't really appreciate properly how wonderful it is. And how, like the other day we found a big snake in the backyard, really a huge thing, about four meters long and as thick as my arm, you know. And uh, he hunts the rats that come to feed on my kitchen garbage that I stash out in the woods next to my house. And some cats come to hunt too. So uh, I told the gardener, just leave him alone, you know? Don't scare him. He's a necessary part of the whole, uh, the, the whole ecosystem here. You know, I eat, I eat a lot of fruit. So I throw the husks and rinds out over the fence into the bushes and the rats come in the night and the cats and snakes come to hunt them. It's not bad, it's not wrong, it's not anything. It's just the way it is. So if we want wholeness, we have to allow it. This is the problem with human beings. They come in, cut down all the trees, plant crops, build houses, mess up everything. And then they wonder, well, where's the ecosystem? Where's the balance? Where's the wholeness? Where's the nature? You killed it. So we have to stop withdrawing from wholeness and wanting these clean, straight lines and square corners on everything. Because that's how we banish nature. Then we start to think that religion and temples and stories we read in books are the goddess, but they're not the goddess. At best, they're metaphors pointing toward the goddess. But the real goddess is there in nature in the whole, in ourselves, when seen in a certain way. And so that's the blessing of this journey. Aung Tat Sat, Aung Shakti Aung.